right, let's finish out the show with our last review of the week. I don't have too much to say about this one, but you know, maybe maybe we'll surprise ourselves. I'm not sure. The Personal History of David Copperfield. This is the latest film written and directed by Armando Iannucci, who did you know a film that I really enjoyed from 2017 called The Death of Stalin. Oh yeah, uh, he's probably best known for being the showrunner for Veep. And he's he's done a lot of work that people are big fans of. I think people really enjoy what he did in terms of his film directing. Uh, In the Loop is something that a lot of people look at as like, that's probably his best movie. Also directed and wrote, wrote that film from 2009. Now, Veep is only, I've only seen a few episodes of that show. I, Death of Stalin is something that I didn't love the first time I saw it. Listeners might remember, I was kind of like a B on that film. I definitely enjoyed it, recommended it, but it wasn't something that really hit me. But it is a, it is a film that really stuck. I remember I watched the History Buffs episode on YouTube. History Buffs is a great YouTube channel where Nick Hodges kind of goes through films that are based on time periods and like kind of analyzes how true to life they were. And his review of Death of Stalin actually made me appreciate the film on an even deeper level. So I highly recommend that, actually. And so when we found out personal history of David Copperfield was going to be coming out, which is an adaptation of the very well-known Charles Dickens novel from 1850. I think a lot of people were thinking, oh my gosh, Iannucci, maybe he's going to take David Copperfield and try to almost sort of lampoon modern times, but using Charles Dickens characters, because that's kind of what he's known to do. I I think other people, especially myself, saw as like, well, it doesn't seem like Iannucci is going to probably go for that. It seems like he's probably going for something with a little bit more prestige. This film premiered at the Toronto Film Festival, for example. So clearly they were going for something that was more of a best picture caliber. Now, the film didn't get that amount of buzz to be clear, but it definitely still got a lot of interest. A lot of people really enjoyed it. It stars Dev Patel as David Copperfield. And that's right. This is kind of the Hamilton brand of a period piece in the sense that it is, quote, colorblind. So characters could be black. They could be Indian. Um, a black character could have a white son. And so all of that stuff is sort of, there's no rules basically to the ethnicity. Now, some people are a little divided on that. Some people say, well, you know, it, it ignores the realities of like racism and the structures of racism in that society. Other people argue the other side. They're like, well, okay, you know, but this movie isn't trying to tell that kind of story. It's, you know, so it's, it's just sort of a fun experiment. That's kind of what people are saying to you about Hamilton. It's, it's sort of a celebrating, uh, Uh, different actors and giving them a chance to play roles that they never could have played before and allow them to stretch and do something different that isn't restrained by history. And we have other films that can sort of do all that other, you know, stuff. And we do. And some people would say we're kind of sick of that. Like we're sick of these period pieces that are all about, you know, those structures because we've gotten so many and they tend to be about the pain of people of color. And let's, let's just have a movie that's a little bit more fun and a little bit more, you know, kind of in this vein, this energy. And so David Copperfield, this adaptation, is very fast. It really walks you through this guy's life. It's a long book, but it it goes through in just under two hours. So that, that's the first most notable thing for people who might be familiar with the source material. I'm not. I never read David Copperfield. I understand that it is Charles Dickens' favorite book that he wrote. A lot of people consider it his masterpiece. But the reason I never read David Copperfield is because I was a great expectations guy. I'm a little basic. What can I say? I, you know, I always looked at the, the two things side by side. You know, I loved studying. I, I wasn't an English major or anything, but, you know, I did all the like advanced courses in high school. And, you know, when it was a competition between great expectations and David Copperfield, I always saw expectations as the darker, the, the grittier kind of take. It, was, it wasn't quite as whiz bang. And, you know, Copperfield has some dark elements to be sure. There's very dark stuff in this, but, you know, it's still a more uplifting thing, especially if you judge both books by their endings. What I like about this adaptation, and it's something that I'm not sure a lot of other people might agree with, is that I think that there is a read of this film where the, the narrator is so unreliable, you could interpret this to be a lot darker then you might perceive it. Where you think the ending, for example, is completely different from what actually happens on screen. That's not giving anything away, but I do, if you're a listener who hasn't watched the movie yet, I I would love to see if anybody else might grab onto that aesthetic. But real quick, just to describe the film, if you're not familiar with the source material, uh, Dev Patel's character, David Copperfield, we go through his life um, from when he's a young child to when he is working for, uh, or when he goes to like visit a boathouse with his housekeeper's family and then 
terrible, cruel things happen to him because his mother marries a very cruel man. And, and then he goes to work in a factory and then he meets, basically he meets all these eccentric characters and he gets caught up in some legal drama with his employer. And, you know, he falls in love, but then he's like, am I really in love with the right person? And it's just sort of like the, the trials and tribulations of a young writer who tries to find fame. So it's kind of an autobiographical sort of book that Dickens was kind of writing about himself. And that sort of ties into like maybe why you might read the ending to be different than it really is. Charlie Ridgely, I know you watched this film, but I'm very, I am so curious, like what is, what is your way into this and, you know, your expectations and your, maybe your familiarity or lack familiarity or lack of familiarity with David Copperfield in general. Cause I have a feeling like, you know, Will Ashton wrote our, our review on the site and he was kind of like, look, I'm not a Dickens expert, but here's my take on the film. But uh, where are you at? Well, this is how little I knew about this. I thought it was about magic. So ah, uh, yes. Before I watched the trailer, <laughs> which they do have fun little I, thing I in the not, beginning. I did not realize that David Copperfield, the magician, was like alive. I thought he was like it was like oh, a Houdini yeah. situation. That like, so that's how I had so many layers of misunderstanding because I thought David Copperfield was Harry Houdini, and so I saw like pictures of this movie when it was first getting. I was like, oh, this is like a whimsical like magic movie with Dev Patel and Hugh Laurie. I'm gonna love this, and. Then I watched the trailer and it's like, well, there was no magic in that. And <laughs> so I Googled it and then realized like, oh, it's a Charles Dickens thing, which I didn't, I, I didn't know about. I'd never read the book. I had, I've read Great Expectations. I've read other Dickens. I never knew about this. I might have in high school and just completely forgot. But sorry to literary people if I'm upsetting you with this. I, I knew nothing about it at all. And all I knew about this film was that I liked the people in it. And I'm a big fan of Armando Iannucci. Uh Death of Stalin was one of my favorite films from uh, 2017 when it came out. And I I love Veep. I think Veep is an, is a great show. Uh, and I I love Ianucci's writing. And Ianucci's writing. You mentioned Great Expectations, and like that seems like more like the Ianucci book to adapt because it is so dark. I would say so, but here we are. It's kind of funny. Ianucci has a he has a way in. I talked about this in my review. Like he finds such humor in our evil as humans in in the in the worst part of our humanity he draws funny from that uh and and the veep ending for those who have seen the veep ending it is very it's not a hopeful thing at all you know it's these characters who have been just terrible people for the whole show continue to be terrible people in life and in death and you know things there is no change to it and there is a very a status quo and and our terrible humanity can't and and it's, death of stalin is the same way and he's very funny in that it's very real uh it's kind of depressing but also hilarious and this this is like the antithesis of ianucci's other stuff it, it has his his tone in terms of it's it's dry and it's really quick in its speech um great dialogue very eccentric um, but it's com- it's completely the opposite in that it is so hopeful. I did not read the ending the way that you're talking about, the way that you might have. Even if the story he tells was different, I see the ending still being the ending. Uh, and maybe the story itself was darker, but he got the chance to tell what, what had happened. And so he gave himself a different story. And, and it's about only you can control what happens next. Only you can control your own situations and your own destiny. Uh, And it's so hopeful in that, that at the end of the day, you know, he got to be where he was because he persevered and because he continued to be himself through every situation that he encountered. Um, I I really loved the message of this film, especially coming from Ianucci. And I, we talk about Bill and Ted and kind of the time that we're in. And I really feel Ianucci has always really had his pulse on society. I think in Veep, he really had his pulse on, on where we were at. He's like the anti Todd Phillips in that like he knew exactly where we were at as a society and and told a great story with it in personal history of david copperfield i think he still really understands that and understands that we have we we're trying to become a a people of great hope and we're trying to look to tomorrow and look for something better uh in in our world no matter whether you live in america or in england or wherever i think we're at a place now where hope is in very short supply and it's something we all desire and he really gave us that with this story and not to mention I me mean, every single character you meet is just so fun based on how they're written and just the actors hugh laurie as mr dick is so so funny uh tilda swinton i mean every time tilda swinton's in anything tilda swinton is fantastic she's she's my favorite character in this i think, I think hugh laurie was mine that. peter capaldi was so good he was a surprise he was he, he actually everyone was much this. better than i anticipated Everyone in this is is just astounding. 
to me. I, I, just, I mean, they're just, they do such a great job of, of kind of capturing this weird whimsy. And it kind of, it almost plays like vignettes from until the third act. You know, he it's all about the stops he makes in his life. It was sad to see Gwendolyn Christie be kind of a villain, but she was a great villain in the parts that she had. I loved Gwendolyn Christie in, uh, she was so fantastic in Game of Thrones. I mean, Brandon Tarth was one of the best characters of that show. And she does a great job in this with what she's given. And, you know, it kind of all comes together and collides in the third act. But it just, this movie made me smile. And uh, it was just kind of kind of quick wit of Iannucci that I love. And I mean, overall, I, I really, I really enjoyed what Iannucci did with a much different story than he is used to. Um, I'm really excited to see what he does next after this and kind of where he takes things. Because it could, I'd love to see Iannucci do a Pixar movie after seeing this. Oh my gosh. Like, <laughs> I think he's got some darkness there, which I mean, you know, you saw Josh Cooley kind of bring this darkness to Toy Story. I'd love to see Yanuchi. You know, Brad Bird's kind of a dark guy sometimes too. And, it, you know, what Yanuchi could do with like a family, happy, you know, st- I think he, it'd be so much fun. But all that to say. That is that is a fascinating idea. I'm very, <laughs> now I'm very curious. I, w- I would love it. I, w- I would love to see what he do with it. But that's all to say. I think, I think David Copperfield is, is, a, is a, a really good movie. It's not for everybody. I don't think, uh, you know, there's, there's parts Morgan watched it with me and, and she didn't get, she didn't like it the way I did. And she was very much like, like they're talking, you know, really fast and really like some of the accents are very thick and they are very hard to understand. And I, it is like, it was very hard for me to even keep up with what they're talking about at, at some points in the film. And it doesn't follow a, a normal plot structure. Like it, it, it's hard to keep up with sometimes. And that is frustrating for some people. And it, it wasn't for me, but that's, that's just a personal thing. I, I really happen to happen to like it a lot. I, I got to say, I'm probably more with Morgan on this one. Sorry, Charlie. Uh, That's okay. You know, okay. I, I was really hoping for this to really surprise me, but I think I think that is the big drawback that I just couldn't shake, which is the speed. You have such a dense story here. And, you know, we say this, it's a bit of a cliche on Cinemaholics for us to be like, this would have been better as a series. But this is one of those cases where I think that just let it let it go through a few episodes, five or six, where you have time. And it's because it's a more episodic story from what I can tell, where you're kind of going from different chapters of his life and relating it to the present. But because the film has to move so fast, you never have time to sort of sit with Copperfield, to sit with Def Patel and let him process what is happening. It's just a lot of plot, a lot of plot just flying and moving and you know, if you're if you're into it, and if you can sink your teeth into the characters and the plot, you'll probably be all right with it. But I guess I just found myself left in the dust with this movie. I I just wanted to sit with it. I wanted to breathe it all in, and because I liked a lot of aspects of it, I think Patel gives a great performance. Yeah, it's one of the best so of his, his career. He's very good. I just think that this is an actor who he has such an energy and such a presence that. It is hard to quantify. Like when he's on screen in any movie, you just cannot ignore him. And it's the reason why so many people like myself are like, make this guy James Bond. Like put, put him Patel in a role that's criminally that is like, underused in Hollywood. Now I know he's he's said, he's like, you know what, I don't want to be James Bond. That's not my thing. But never say never, Def. I think that's uh he I think he is due for a performance or a character to be given to him that is worthy of what he can do. And that's not to say that he's, you know, none of his characters have been worthy. It's just more of like, none of his characters have been all of that memorable or written to be as iconic. I thought David Copperfield might be the character to do that. I think the problem with a story like this is that because Charles Dickens has been ripped off so many times uh, because, you know, he's been, he's been an inspiring writer and people just sort of take his characters and do totally new things with him it makes the source material feel kind of dated. It makes it feel overly familiar because there's only so much you can do. And I, I think Ianucci was maybe a little bit too precious with the story and making it more conventional and kind of true to the spirit of the book from what I can tell, from from my best analysis here. I just never felt like this was a modern take. I felt like this is the kind of movie where, you know, let's go back in time and middle school John is you know, on a field trip. And it's one of those charter buses where they have the TVs, you know what I mean, Charlie? And like, all right, what's the teacher going to play? Personal history of David Copperfield. All right, kids, if you're going to watch something, it's going to be educational. Uh, Don't worry, we'll get to the state fair in a few hours. Like that, that was the vibe I got from this movie was this kind of like, all right, it's, you know, it's certainly a cut above a TV movie for sure, but it's definitely not trying to be anything really like magnificent in the filmmaking. It, it, it's just kind of going for something a little quieter, a little, a little subtler. Yeah. If it had been a little slower too, I probably 
would be all about it. I think it's one of those that it hit me in the right spot at the right time. You know, I just, it was what I wanted it to be. And I, I, I think it could have been a little bit weirder and I would have liked it even more. But uh, yeah, I, I, I think that, you know, Deb Patel is very good. All, all the actors are very good. And I, I do see what you're saying. I think that, you know, given this like a three or four episode, like BBC slash HBO series, you know, you know, like those little tandem series they do. Uh, I think that could have really worked well for this. And, uh, but I mean, I'm happy with what we got. And at the end of the day, you know, that's, I, I kind of put this right there. I liked Bill and Ted a hair more, but like, you know, I keep kind of running list of my films on Letterboxd and Bill and Ted's at nine and this is sitting at 10. You know, I, I really, I really appreciated it. Uh, I mean, I've, I haven't seen nearly as many as you have. I've seen 45 movies in 20 like, or new movies in 2020. Oh, I thought for a second you meant 10 out of 10. I was like, oh my goodness. I didn't know you. Oh, no, 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 no. Of, of my uh, uh, positions yeah, in ranked. the films I've seen, the rankings. Got it, got you know, it, got Bill it. and Ted is my number nine of the year and Copperfield is 10 so far. There's a lot, like I said, there's a lot I haven't seen, but I I, I, I appreciated this a good bit and uh, I'm, I'm I'm excited to for more people to get to see it because I mean, right now it's it's only a theatrical release because it was another, like New Mutants, it was a Fox film. It was a Searchlight picture that, that Searchlight, got bought up by yeah. Disney. So it had to go to theaters. But I think, you know, with the windows they're talking about, I think that this will be on digital much sooner than other things and i'm excited if people get to see it because I, I do think it is there's a lot to merit there agreed not a drive-in theater by any stretch no not at all not <laughs> yeah at all. so give, just just wait if you have an interest it'll it'll be on demand eventually or maybe a stream and when that happens I, I definitely recommend definitely recommend checking it out i do have to correct myself I, you know i i kind of said that i made it sound a little more conventional and straightforward this movie does have a lot of cinematic flourishes like there there are some of the things where they do sort of reinvent what uh, a story like this could be. It kind of reminded me in some ways like Tesla, which, you know, the Ethan Hawke film we just talked about not Mm -hmm. too long ago on the show, where that movie certainly was like trying to do like more flashy and subversive things in order to like tell the story in a new way. They do that in this movie too. Uh, Not all the time and not in every scene, but it happens, especially toward the end. And I guess we did kind of allude to it. I did appreciate all that stuff. I guess it just never hit. You know, it sounds like it hit yeah. you in a certain way for whatever reason. Yeah, it just kind of washed it's over. Just, I think it's one, of, it's one of those that, it, you know, because because Tesla didn't hit me the way it hit other people. Didn't hit me either. You know, I thought I thought Tesla was I thought Tesla was a, a fairly good movie. Um, I respect how it was made, but, you know, it didn't click with me like it did with other people. And for David Copperfield, I think it's kind of the same way of it's a it's a it's a it's a very specific film and it isn't going to click with everybody. And I don't think it was trying to. I feel bad though, because these are the biopics I want, where they are trying yeah, new things. Absolutely. And but I'm still being like, nah, you know, I don't. Yeah, like it was, it I think I think it kind of you know the way that I feel about Tesla seems like the way you feel about Tesla and Copperfield. It's like I really respect this film. It's just not. It doesn't hit me the way that I hoped it would. But Copperfield does, which I'm, I'm happy to hear that you yes, enjoyed it quite feel, a bit. Feels that way for me, for sure. I'm a pretty low B minus, almost a C plus. Uh, I was kind of a C plus after I watched it. And, you know, after sitting on it, I was like, well, you know, there's enough in here that I did enjoy that. Yeah, it's it's about a B minus where uh, like very, very low side. I'm like, I, I liked it. You know, I, I didn't think it was bad. And I definitely think some people will get a kick out of it as well. But I could see a lot of people watching this and just maybe in my being in the same situation as me is like if I didn't have to watch this for the show. I, I don't know if I would have finished it, to be totally honest with you. So that that's my grade. But uh, where are you at? Sounds like you're pretty high. Uh, on this one. Yeah, I'm probably a B, B plus area there. Um, you know, like I said, I think it, I think it, it really, it does what it sits out to do. And and for me, that was, that was what I wanted. So yeah, definitely, definitely a high, high B. I don't know if I quite go B plus, but right there. That is a solid recommendation from Charlie. Yeah, kind of more hesitant that you might like this. I don't know from John. Uh, like you mentioned, personal history of David Copperfield is now playing in theaters. Please do not watch this in a theater if you are in the United States. But if you are overseas, by all means, I know uh, Lionsgate distributed this for the UK, so you have plenty of options. Watch this I as think well. It's coming to Blu-ray soon in the UK, I believe. Yeah, so. I say just you know if it's if you're in if you're in the United States or you know North America in general, and you, I, I say wait, uh, don't don't rush out to see this in a public space. It's not worth it, in my opinion. I think that you're better off just waiting for it to hit on demand and check it out there. Uh, it's definitely a nice rental. Uh, I'll give it that for sure. 